What is up, players? Warboss Tay back up in this mug. Welcome back to my painting table for another unbooking. You might have seen my Game of Thrones video game podcast that I just posted up, episode one, Iron from Ice from the Telltale Games Game of Thrones video game. And I thought now would be a great time, especially since I've got my webcam hooked up, to show you this amazing and awesome visual guide of the world of Westeros, the untold history of Westeros and the Game of Thrones. So this book kind of goes along with the, the other books, but it does not move the story forward. It is basically a fluff fiction lore book that kind of leads up to the novels. So it doesn't have anything about the, the rebellion, the King of the North, uh, Ned Stark getting <laughs> Ooh, almost got into spoiler territory. Let's start getting uh, w the stuff that happens to him. But um, what it does have is a lot of cool drawings, paint, paintings, artwork of of the different locations and characters in the Game of Thrones leading up to the present. So this is Dragonstone, um, which uh, I, I love most of the artwork. is very bleak, dark. Uh, very realistic looking and you've got uh, the Dragonstone Castle up here it's probably like Sir Davos or his buddies down here the Onion Knight some some houses the Targaryen sigil of the three-headed dragon anyways I'm gonna take through the different sections of the book but we're not gonna look into it too much Storm's End uh, we're not gonna go into too much about what each section is there's just some, some points I want to start like giving you an overview of and kind of pique your interest because I think if you can get this book on sale I got it for 20% off I took the sticker off then uh, it's it's definitely a great fluff book to have to read while you're waiting for the next season to premiere on HBO or the next book to come out by George R.R. R. Martin uh, like I said it's one of my favorite fictional universes to be in this is really cool because it's very fluffy it's it's from the the fictional author of this book and uh, it's first it's dedicated to you can see it says Robert and then that got kind of got erased and then it's a Joffrey and then that kind of it got erased and then it says Tommen because Tom King Tommen is the current one on the throne so it's basically he took this book and every time there's a new king he erased the name of the person who owned it uh, there's a little preface of the, the the fictional writer of the book how he came to be a maester and his interest in history and then yeah then all of a sudden boom you've got artwork Aegon the Conqueror upon Balerion, the the, tr the Black Dread. And it starts as a history book, Adu, with uh, the very first thing in the universe that anyone knows or remembers. It's the, the Dawn Age, how the lands are formed, the giants, the children of the forest. Um, and then it goes into when man started coming out of his caves and interacting with the children of the forest. There is this thing called the, the Pact. I believe is that what it's called or is that I'm thinking of something else yeah the pact was forged when uh, the men wanted to kind of expand and the children of the forest said yeah okay giant spiders with whites or white walkers who don't look at that my bookmark the a lot of uh, or the artwork a lot of the artwork is just so visually excellent crisp clean and uh, here you've got Dragon Lords of Valyria. I mean, they look so realistic and it's so well done. It's not cartoony at all. It's made to be very, very realistic. The fires of the 14 flames coursing through Valyria fuel for the pyromancer's magic. You see a bunch of dragons soaring through the air. Look at this battlefield. Amazing. This isn't such a, such a great book. The, the, the paper is really high quality. It's um, it, like it, it feels like if you remember that the, the Tamurkan book from Forge World, it kind of feels very similar to that. Princess Nymeria leading the 10,000 ships. Then it talks about the doom, the reign of the dragons, uh, Dragonstone. Again, Dragonstone Castle. Aegon the Conqueror. So I love how you hear about these characters or you read about them but you don't really get an idea for who they were you read about their exploits what they did maybe there's a hint of how they were but these 
pieces of art really show you uh, a very excellent look at who the characters could have been. Oris Baratheon, the first Lord of Storm's End. So you see for the, for the Baratheon look, they want him to be big and beefy with long, dark hair, beards. Oh, look at this. A northern king bowing to a Tar Targaryen. That's fantastic. There's all this gilded edging around the, uh, the text. What was that? The submission of Torrin Stark, the king who knelt. Above, the meeting between Maria Martell and Rhaenys Targaryen. You see, a lot of the, the art is really well composed, too. You see where the artist's perspective was. He wanted to have the light coming in through the windows. He wanted the, um, the difference in the color between the red and the blonde hair and the white hair and the gold. And it's just really composed really well. Oh, how's this? Look at this. The Iron Throne, as imagined in... Uh, in this book. White cloaks surrounding it. Could you imagine if the, the Iron Throne on the, the HBO show looked like that from the very beginning? So cool. Aegon the First. Aegon the Conqueror, crowned by the High Septon. Okay, and then what's cool is it takes you through all of the Targaryens. You get to see some, some of them when they are young and there's a bunch of them when they're when they're older. Then you get to learn of the brides, and here's where I think the artists just went crazy with how um, how to draw, you know, beautiful women because they're all they all look really really good, like portraits. Again, scale. Like it just this looks like something out of 40k. Huge, gothic, many many multi multi layered uh, stories. Portrait. King uh, King Jaehaerys the first and good queen Alysanne with the son Prince Aemon. T Aemon? Prince Aemon? Oh, is that is that Maester Aemon? Baby Maester Aemon. This King Viserys the first. Princess Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra the realm's delight. And look at these little sketches of kids. King Viserys, the sons of King Viserys, the sons of Princess Rhaenyra. Um, I love this book. I'm not even reading the fluff, but the fluff in the fiction is is all excellent. I've flipped through it once. I've skimmed it. Aegon the Third. Look at this. It's so well done. I mean, clean lines. Very very simple you can see where the light source is kind of shining from behind and the shadow and the darkness on this side very noble bearing like wh whoever they got to to be the artist for these these pieces look so well composed and well drawn and these three women the sisters of king baylor and just really beautiful portraits Oh no, this must be Egan. Again, look, the nine mistresses of Aegon the Fourth. Like barely mentioned maybe in the books and fully fleshed out in this. So, like I, I just have to keep mentioning that this is all pre Game of Thrones. So you see a lot of these portraits pictures of these uh, Targaryen kings and rulers when they were young and it's all just for for you for your context Lord Tywin Lannister hand of the king okay so now we're getting a little bit more closer to present day when the books begin or in the TV show Tywin is already old um, but he was the hand of the king the mad king King Aerys and he was the one who betrayed him to uh, to end the, the rebellion and then his uh, son, Jamie Lannister, killed him. Thus earning the name, the Kingslayer. The Mad King, Aerys II. Rhaegar Targaryen, the Prince of Dragonstone, looking very much like... What's his name? Thor. The actor who plays Thor. King Robert Baratheon, the first of his name. And... Yeah, so that kind of takes us to the... To the modern day. So... That first section is all history, right? The second section 
is the Seven Kingdoms, which I think is the most interesting. Personally, I think this is the most interesting part of the book because it breaks up the Seven Kingdoms into sections and you can see visual representation of where everything is. Things that you hear about in the book, in the books or hear about or see in the show, um, you really get to get a sense for what goes where. In each section, you also have um, the head house their sigil here in the center surrounded by others around it and the boltons you boltons the flayed man um yeah so you get to see what winterfell is supposed to look like in the books you don't really get a sense for the scale of it in the show but the wall how large and just how insignificant you feel when you look at the wall how you're supposed to the different castles of the the Night's Watch that guard the wall. Uh, I think it's terrific. You can see some, if you're a wildling looking at the wall, what it looks like from the opposite end there. Then you get to the Riverlands. House Tully. <laughs> Lord Forest Frey riding to war. Sir Elmo Tully, uh, River Run. So you can see, you can also see how each uh, each stronghold looks very much. It has a very distinct look. River Run with the white stones and the blue parapets and roofs and the way that the artist wanted to capture the whites of the clouds and the sky and the blues and the grays. Very very different from the dark uh, North Winterfell. All ice, cold, frozen. Alright, we're gonna keep going. The Veil. Vale. House Aaron. The Eerie. So, again, very cold, very lots of whites and blues, but this one is uh, up in the sky rather than the river Riverlands where it's more water. The Iron Islands where the Greyjoy, House Greyjoy, is based. The Greyjoys of Pike. Yeah. The art, very, very dark, like deep ocean. The remaining towers of Pike Castle. The Westerlands. So I love how just brutal everything is in this universe. House Lannister, Under the Dragons. Lord Tytos Lannister and his heir, Sir Tywin. So there's a young Sir Tywin Lannister. Casterly Rock, up there. Then you get to the Reach. House Tyrell. High Garden. It's a very lush, green, beautiful Stormlands. What is this? House Baratheon. Oh, yeah. This is where they. Live. Look at that! It's so awesome! Sir Duncan the Tall of the Kingsguard facing Lord Lionel Baratheon in single combat. So, if I were to build a Lord Lionel Baratheon, the Bretonian box has a helmet with the antlers coming off of it. You've got stag paraphernalia. I mean, it's, it would be really fun, take a lot of work, but to be able to create the uh, characters in the fiction would be a good kit bashing project for anyone who's interested in using the Game of Thrones kind of houses in a fictional way for uh, uh, Warhammer. And you go to Dorn. I like how the style of Dorn is very, let's say like Middle Eastern, exotic. Princess Nymeria and Mors Martell enthroned on Sunspear. Ooh, look at this, the death of Meraxes. I love this, the light coming through the ruins of this keep, shining down. You see the dragon, light playing through the dragon's wings, um, defeated on the ground. You see the warriors standing above it, backlit by the smoke and the mist coming out of the castle. I mean, just beautifully, beautifully composed. Aegon the Conqueror reading The Prince of Dorne's Missive. So realistic, you know? the the artwork. Beyond the Sunset Kingdom. 
the free cities. Okay, so this is where you go into, you know, where Daenerys, da Daenerys is hanging out. Norvos, Kohor, a Mirish trade woman. Ooh, what's going on here? The Council of the Triarchy. Hmm. A Lyseni noblewoman, a Tyroshi merchant, Pentos, Volantis, <laughs> slave markings of Volantis, okay. The execution of the Triarch Horono. Hey, that looks familiar. Bravos, the Titan of Bravos, the Iron Bank of Bravos, the Temple District of Bravos. I love maps. Maps has always intrigued me. Beyond the free cities. I thought there's some stuff on the Dothraki. South Royals. The grasslands. Here we go. Dothraki. The battle before the gates of Sathar. Best Dothrak. Ice of the White Waste, the Shivering Sea. What? A woman of the Thousand Islands? What? That is so weird. So, as you can see, if the first part of the book was about history, the second part of the book is about geography and where where everything is in this world. Yiti! Aikunda Hiro with Lightbringer in hand, leading the Virtuous into battle. Uh, I don't know what that voice was. The Jogos Nai riding upon Zorses. Zorses, really? Zebra horses? Zorses is the best name you could think of. I don't know who thought of that. If that was George R.R. R. Martin or Elio Garcia Jr. or Linda Antonson. But Zorses? Really? It's pretty awesome. What is it? It's a zebra. It's a horse. It's a horse. Uh, okay, a Yitish male and a Lengi female. So Yiti, very obviously supposed to be what China, Korea, some kind of East Asian, East Asian looking thing, and Lengi, Egypt maybe. Very Cleopatra going on with the, especially with the armbands and the hello, the bangs and the short cropped hair. A shy by the shadow. Then you get to the afterwards. Dragons reborn? Question mark. So there's Daenerys with her little baby dragons. Let's read the afterward because that seems fun. In the years since I first set pen to parchment, much has changed both in Westeros and beyond. Readers must understand that such a work as this is not the labor of a mere few weeks or even years. I first set the framework for this history during the peaceful years at the height of good King Robert's reign, intending to dedicate the volume to Robert and his heirs as a history of the land and the world that they inherited. But such was not to be. And then it gets into some spoilers, so I won't read those. In such times of trouble, we must all pray that good King Tommen shall see a long reign and a just one to usher us again out of the darkness and into the light. This is pretty cool. T Targaryen lineage to suss out what goes where. Tom and Baratheon, Marjorie Tyrell. Okay, so this is kind of where we ended up, right? Stark lineage, very cool. I didn't know there's a, the first Stark was named Benjen also, like Uncle Benjen. It also has the stuff in the book like Sansa, Marrying Tyrion, uh, Rob Stark marrying Jane, Lannister lineage. Okay, so we won't go through all of them and point them out. Baratheon, the reign, starting with King Robert, then going to Joffrey, and then to Tommen. Targaryen reign, long one. And then that's it, and then you get to the index. So, beautiful book, beautifully, beautifully done. Hey, Jon Snow! You know nothing. Meow. What is this? This looks amazing. 
Rhaegar Targaryen and Lord Robert Baratheon meeting at the Ruby Ford during the Battle of the Trident. That is awesome. Okay, King Robert, before he was fat King Robert. Uh, we'll, we'll leave on that one. This is a great book. Oh my gosh, it's 20 minutes long. Thank you guys so much for watching, sticking through all the way to the end to check out the book. I really basically just wanted to flip through it, but as you can see, there's so much, and the art just jaw-dropping. I really wanted to stop to talk about the art in different, um, in different ways, because to me, as an artist, as a painter, the artwork really stands out to me. Uh, the, the composition of the subjects and um, what they choose to focus on and where they want to put the light and the light sourcing from. I think if you paint miniatures, that's really important to look at because when you're painting a miniature, you have to think about things like where the light plays, where do you want the light source to look like it's coming from, how, how you want to accentuate the colors and what colors you choose to pop out, the red and the yellow, and what colors you want to fade into the background just to give an idea of what the shape of it is without um, really interfering, like the, the, the dark armor. You can tell the horse, I mean, just the, the choices were made to make this Targaryen's armor look almost black. The horse, very dark, like black, dark steel, dark iron. Whereas this one, the sun is shining off of Robert's silver armor. So even though some of the armor looks really dark because it's in the shadow, it doesn't look black. And you can see the glint on the silver much more on the helmet and the shoulder than on this guy's breastplate. See, I could go on for a long time because I love this stuff. But um, let me know what you guys think. The World of Ice and Fire, that's what this book is called. If you can get it for a discount, definitely get it. If you really, really want it, pay full price for it. I don't know if it's worth full price because it doesn't, it doesn't tell you anything really about the current characters. It's really just about everything that happens before the events in the books and the movies or the show and it kind of gives you a good backdrop so if you do take the time to flip through it and and read and um, look at it then you know it might be of use to you but it's really for I guess it would be I would say it's for hipsters <laughs> Game of Thrones hipsters who want to know the, the the actual canon history and characters um, just to just to know them so thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this look at oh, the world of ice and fire, George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones universe, and we'll see you in the next video. What is this? Get out of here.